Who were the Livonians? Once a seafaring and fishing people along Latvia's Baltic coast, they played a vital role in trade, culture, and the shifting politics of Northern Europe. Yet today, they are all but erased from maps, remembered only in fragments of folklore and faint echoes of their language. For centuries, the Livonians lingered in obscurity, overshadowed by more powerful neighbors and nearly forgotten by history. But now, with the combined tools of archaeology, linguistics, and genetics, scientists are reconstructing their story. This film takes you into Europe's overlooked shadows, the world of the Livonians, a people science barely knew. The Livonians made their home in what is now the northern and western coast of Latvia, particularly along the Gulf of Riga. This landscape of sandy shores, winding rivers, and marshlands offered both sustenance and strategic importance. The Baltic Sea provided fish in abundance, while its rivers connected inland settlements to broader networks of trade. These waterways were the arteries that drew merchants, warriors, and settlers from far beyond the Baltic. Geographically, the Livonians stood at a crossroads. To their south and east were the Baltic tribes, Latgalians, Semigalians, and Coronians. To the north and west were fellow Finnic peoples, like the Estonians. From across the sea came Norse traders and raiders, the Vikings, whose ships dominated the region's waters. By the early Middle Ages, Slavic groups were also pushing into the eastern Baltic frontier. In such a position, the Livonians were never isolated, they were constantly negotiating identities, alliances, and survival among larger powers. This geography was a blessing and a curse. It made the Livonians prosperous, integrated into the flow of goods and ideas that bound Scandinavia, Russia, and Central Europe. Yet it also left them vulnerable. Their lands were coveted by more powerful neighbors, and their coastal settlements became easy targets for conquest. The very rivers and seas that enriched them also opened the path for their subjugation. Thus, the geography of Livonia shaped both their rise and their tragic decline, at once a stage for opportunity and a doorway to vulnerability. The Livonian language belonged to the Finno-Ugric family, making it a close relative of Estonian and Finnish. This placed the Livonians in a fascinating position. They were Finnic speakers living within a region dominated by Baltic and later Slavic Indo-European languages. In this sense, they were a cultural and linguistic bridge, preserving ancient Finno-Ugric traditions while absorbing influences from their neighbors. Archaeological finds and medieval chronicles suggest that the Livonians were often bilingual, conducting trade and diplomacy in Baltic tongues while maintaining their own language in daily life and ritual. Loan words flowed in both directions, Livonian vocabulary carried traces of Baltic culture, while Latvian inherited words from Livonian, particularly in coastal dialects. This linguistic exchange reflected centuries of coexistence and intermingling. Yet language is the heartbeat of identity, and for the Livonians, its loss marked the beginning of their disappearance. As German crusaders, Baltic rulers, and later empires imposed political dominance, Livonian retreated from public life to isolated fishing villages. By the modern era, it survived only among small coastal communities. With each generation of language loss came the erosion of stories, songs, and memory. When Livonian faded, so too did the most vital marker of their distinct identity. By the 12th century, the Livonians found themselves at the center of a violent transformation sweeping across northern Europe. The Baltic coast, once a patchwork of tribal societies, drew the attention of German knights, missionaries, and merchants who sought to expand Christendom's frontiers. This movement, known as the Northern Crusades, targeted the pagan peoples of the Baltic, including the Livonians. At first, contact came through trade. German merchants established footholds along the Dogava River, linking Livonian settlements to the bustling markets of Lübeck and beyond. But commerce soon gave way to conquest. In 1199, Bishop Albert of Buxoeden launched a crusading mission into Livonian lands, bringing with him the newly founded Order of the Sword Brothers, a militant religious order. For the Livonians, the outcome was devastating. Resistance was fierce but fragmented. Some clans sought alliances with Estonians or Coronians, while others turned reluctantly toward cooperation with the Crusaders. 
Yet the combination of military force, strategic fortifications, and religious authority proved overwhelming. By the early 13th century, the Livonians were forced into baptism, their shrines dismantled, and their leaders subordinated to German ecclesiastical and feudal power. Assimilation followed swiftly. German settlers dominated the towns, while Latgalian and other Baltic groups increasingly absorbed rural Livonian communities. The once distinct Finnic identity began to blur, eroded by conversion, taxation, and intermarriage. The conquest of Livonia marked more than political subjugation, it was the beginning of cultural erasure. The Livonians, once autonomous players in the Baltic world, became subjects in a German-ruled province. Their language retreated, their traditions fragmented, and their collective autonomy dissolved. In the medieval crucible of the Northern Crusades, the Livonians were transformed from a people with their own voice into shadows within someone else's empire. Modern genetic studies have begun to illuminate the story of the Livonians in ways that history alone cannot. Analyses of genomes from the Baltic region show that the Livonians were most closely related to other Finnic-speaking groups, particularly Estonians and Finns. This connection confirms their linguistic heritage, linking them to the broader Finno-Ugric world that stretches deep into northern Eurasia. At the same time, the Livonian genetic profile reflects centuries of contact with their Baltic and European neighbors. Intermarriage with Latvians and other Baltic peoples left a clear imprint, blending Indo-European ancestry with their Finnic roots. Viking activity along the Gulf of Riga also introduced genetic signals from Scandinavia, while later waves of German influence, first through the Crusading Orders and later through the Hanseatic League, added further layers. This combination makes the Livonians both distinct and hybrid. On the one hand, their DNA preserved markers of the ancient Finnic presence in the Baltic, evidence of a population that predated many Indo-European arrivals. On the other, their genomes testify to centuries of cultural and political entanglement. In this way, genetics confirms what history suggests. The Livonians were never isolated, but a people defined by both continuity and blending at Europe's crossroads. By the 19th century, the Livonians had dwindled to small coastal enclaves along the Gulf of Riga. Their once widespread settlements and cultural influence had contracted into a handful of fishing villages, where the Livonian language survived only in family circles and folk songs. As Latvian and German became dominant in schools, churches, and commerce, Livonian receded further into obscurity, spoken by fewer each generation. The 20th century accelerated this decline. World War II devastated Livonian communities, villages were destroyed, populations displaced, and many fled or perished. Under Soviet occupation, coastal areas were militarized, forcing the Livonians from their ancestral homes. Traditional fishing, the backbone of their economy and culture, was heavily restricted. With displacement came further erosion of language and identity as younger generations assimilated into Latvian society. By the late 20th century, Livonian was critically endangered, spoken fluently by only a handful of elders. In 2013, the last native speaker, Griselda Christina, passed away in Canada, marking the symbolic end of a living language. What had once been a thriving Baltic Finnic people had, within a few centuries, slipped into extinction. Their fate illustrates how cultural survival can vanish quietly, even within modern memory. Though the Livonian people have vanished as a native-speaking community, shadows of their culture still linger. Fragments of their folklore, songs, and traditional melodies survive, woven into Latvian cultural heritage. Place names along the Gulf of Riga preserve traces of their presence, silent markers of a lost identity. In recent decades, revival movements have emerged, small but determined. Language classes, cultural associations, and festivals strive to keep the memory alive, even if fluency is gone. Today, Livonian identity endures less as a living nation and more as a symbol of resistance against erasure, reminding Europe of history's fragile, vanishing voices. The story of the Livonians is a stark reminder of how fragile human cultures can be. A people who once thrived along the Baltic coast were nearly erased, their voice fading into silence. Yet modern science, through archaeology, linguistics, and genetics, has resurrected fragments of their identity, giving them presence once more. 
The Baltic story is not only of Vikings and Germans, but also of Finnic shadows who shaped its shores. In the Livonians, we glimpse not merely a vanished nation, but the delicate threads of memory that bind our shared past, fragile yet enduring in the echoes they leave behind. <laughs>